Welcome back, everybody, to Unconditional Surrender in Europe. Uh, game is designed by Salvatore Vasta, published by GMT Games. This is the East First campaign series. Uh, my opponent is Luciante. Uh, board Game Geek handles Luciante. Um, it will be in the comments as well. We will be starting with the... Uh, let's get up our little boxes all over the place. Um, we will be starting with the uh, January 1942. And here's the weather roll. Oops. That's me hitting the weather roll, not the not the V-log. There's the V-log weather roll. Because it was 463, so it was severe, severe poor. And that took care of that. Uh, next up, I think, is going to be the national tracks. Uh, we didn't bother to declare war on anybody. We went into the economy phase. We just move around a bunch of counters. Germans are down to 24 at this point. Because I hold Aachen. Uh, that was my September uh, offensive. And I've been hanging out here in Aachen ever since. Um, so I've been cutting down the German production capability. But it's not like he has a lot to spend it on. Um, so... Heroic victory, I guess. Uh, and then we're set there. Okay. Whoops, not the turn track. Bring up wrong stuff. Uh, so then we went into strategic warfare. I think we both were at zero. And no, nothing to play. So he rolled a six. I rolled a one. UK loses a factory. Factory count, counter, lost counter goes up to two. Strategic movement, he picked the guy up in Hanover and ran him all the way over to the gap over here in Russia. I wish Vassal would actually center on things rather than putting him in the corner. And so it's way over there. Um, the west, I just took my marker off because I didn't want to do anything. And the Soviets just took theirs off. Uh, I went to operations phase. Uh, basically, this is... It's severe weather, so it's like pot shots to take a hit to take back Aachen. Um, I'm gonna put down the assault markers. Uh, so I started off at two because I'm plus one for French, plus one for elite. Um, he started off with two as a German, plus one for each buddy, and then minus one for the city. So it's plus three to plus two, and we were halved. He rolled a three plus three, which was you know. Not bad. Six to have to three. Uh, I managed to roll. Because of my plus two, um, I was guaranteed of not being retreated because this is the lowest roll I can get, and it rounds up to a two. And a three to two does not move me. So then I think he goes ahead and does this combat. I think he was just trying to cost me production points by flipping me because he can't really retreat me there. Because uh, he ends up at plus one to plus two. He ended up with a grand total of six. And... So well, six and half down to a three, and then I go to six plus two, which is eight, half down to a four. So again, nothing happened. Uh, now he moves the Yugoslavs. Yay, Yugoslavs charging into Russia. And he brings another Yugoslav up to go charging off into Russia. And then he was done. Uh, where's... Did I... Uh... I do. Oh, I'm moving Frenchmen. That's what I'm doing. I keep forgetting that I'm logged in as the Soviets. I need to change that because it's confusing me when I do these replays. I'm like, what are the Soviets doing? It's like, actually, I'm moving the West with the Soviets. Um, so uh, that guy moves to the border. This guy moves to the border. And then I abandon the Maginot line force to put a line, put a, somebody in the line on the Italian border. Uh, he's got pro markers in Italy and Spain, so I'm like, I have to protect both states. That's one of the reasons why the uh, BEF is down here uh, in Gibraltar, is to prevent me from getting whacker doodled out of the Mediterranean. Uh, so, I mean, this is my big strategic move. I thought about trying to attack this armored unit up here. And it was like a plus three to a plus three, and I really didn't want to just spend six points to most likely fail, because it's halved. If it had been poor weather, I might have tried it, because I might have had a chance to get a DR, but plus three to plus three, and we're both halved, I mean, <laughs> I need a 6-1 split 
to make it work. Uh, and I'm not going to get that. So uh, I did go ahead and throw my airplanes. We did the math, and it's like it's just two sorties each. So just trying to chop down the German Air Force a little bit uh, until I can get something arranged to get the British Air Force in here to help. Uh, then... Yeah, I think now I just did supply. And I rang him up to, to five to supply all three units, the Gibraltar unit and the two French units in French North Africa. And the British down here ran themselves up to six to do the Western Desert Force and the 10th Army. The guy in Cairo I left at low supply. Uh, and there's a French over in Syria that's in low supply as well. And then I think I ran up the... Um, the convoy in Gibraltar has to run up to keep the airplane and the BEF in supply. And I think I'm done. Yeah, go to the Soviets. Uh, I moved one army. Uh, this army basically moved to be on a rail line. So if I want to rail them someplace, I can. I just, you know, that was my big move. Um, and then I moved the Turks. I have a, I had a garrison unit that was in Ankara here, and I basically just moved him up to cover one of the gaps. Uh, I really don't know what to do with the Turks, because once you're kicked off, you know, going across the Bosphorus is not going to happen. Um, and then that's it, I think. Yeah, we go to no supply, we go to replacements. Um, the Germans are at 16, and they want to build their fourth airplane. So I think he only does two airplanes here. And then we go into the west, and then I do the French airplanes. What did we go to next? Um, Oh, did the French convoy. Then I did the British convoy in Gibraltar. And I think I do the British convoy in the Med. And then I, I fixed the convoy in the Western Indian Ocean because I figured I need to get that convoy out of there and, uh, you know, available for supply and stuff. So that's what I did. And the USSR just replaced its airplane up here. And then we were done with that. Nobody has upgrades. Mobilization for the Axis. This is them building their airplane. Puts it down in Bremen. Up here on the north. Um, the West didn't have anything to build. The Soviets, I think, went bonkers here. They had a bunch of points left and still could play in the Diplomacy Cup, so they went ahead and pulled uh, what did they do? They put an infantry unit in um, Rezev to the north put another one in Rostov, and then they built two airplanes in Smolensk and Orel. And that was it. We went into diplomacy phase. Um, he didn't bother to pull out of the cup. We know there's three no events, a political success, a British political success, and a political failure. So it's one in six that he gets a success. Also one in six he gets the failure, and the others, you know, don't really matter to him. Uh, and he pulled the political failure. Now the only thing I can do is it has to be adjacent to active German countries. So it was put a pro marker in Greece or remove the pro marker in Italy. And guess what I did, kids? Poof. Then I was looking at this and I said, well, I know there's no political failure, so why don't I take a chance and go ahead and pull? I had two chances in five now. 
So I went ahead and pulled, and I got the Pro Western. And I was like, oh, well, there's one other threat on my lower border here. They're at Madrid. So I said goodbye to that. So now I don't have to worry about my flanks so much. I can go back to the war against Germany. And then with the Soviets, I said, there's still one political success in there. We're going to make it hard on the Germans. You know, another political failure could, you know, maybe start tipping either Greece or Rome my way. And that was the end of that. Uh, check phase, we go into end turn phase. Not a lot comes out here on the turn track. Uh, I did get an ultra on the ground support. He got a surface action marker. We go into February. And yeah, we are Oh, rolling for weather. And this time he got a um, a mild in the mild zone he got poor weather, so he has a little better attack coming there. Um, and we're off. Uh, nobody declare or pop this up so you can see the counters move around. And now we're done with that. Uh, went to strategic warfare phase. We're both at zero. But I went ahead and played my ultra marker. Now this was more of, yeah, it would have been nice if I had done really well and, and knocked him down a factory. But I was looking at it more from the standpoint of, I wanted the British, I mean, the British are only at 14 this turn, which is, you know, it's hard to do stuff with the British with only small such small amounts. So I'm just trying to get my factory back. So, and he managed to roll a six. It was a good thing that I halved him because that makes him a three. Um, I only rolled a two, but a three to a two is a diamond, so I get my factory back. He doesn't lose one, but I get my factory back. And then five months before I see, five more turns before I see the ultra again. So that hurt. Um, he's got subs coming, I think, in June. So he's, you know, he's going to be able to go back at me for strategic warfare from that standpoint. Strategic movement, I'm not sure he had one. No, he just moved to his events. I did take the guy southeast of, or southwest of Bordeaux, the Frenchman, and brought him up to Lille. Uh, and the Soviets didn't have one. We went to operations phase for the Axis. Um, he, th he originally thought he could do a mobile attack on Antwerp, and I'm like, you can't do a mobile attack in poor weather. That's the uh, new living rules. Uh, so, we've been playing that all game. And... So, he's going to start with the guy that's not across the river. He's plus two. Oh, I think we, we have to go to combat commitment here, I think. Yes. I mean, it was a no-brainer. We both knew we were going to commit. But, just to follow form. So, he played his tanks, I played my tanks... He picked an airplane, I picked Dijon, he took, he picked Dusseldorf, we forgot to highlight it. Um, so then we had to do an air combat, he's at minus two net. Uh, plus two for German, minus two for weather, minus two for sorties. And I'm at like minus six, because I'm French and my aircraft suck. Uh, so I'm getting a one no matter what I roll. And of course he rolled a six, minus two is a four, which is what he wanted to see. So he takes one sortie and I take two. Good thing is, is because he was minus two, he can't stop me from getting into the combat, so my plus one will be there. So, uh, this is me resetting the numbers. I started going the wrong direction. Uh, I'm plus one for being French, one for being elite, one for a tank, one for an airplane. So I'm at plus four. And then we go do the Germans. And he's plus two for German, plus one for the tank marker, plus one for the buddy, plus two for the next tank marker, plus one for the airplane. And then it's minus one for the city and minus one for the weather. And he wanted me to count it again, so I did that. And then he was like, oh, okay, you're right. He thought he was, should have been plus six. But it's like, no, there's an extra minus one for the weather. 
And so then we rolled. He rolled a three plus five, so now he's at an eight. And I'm like, yeah, I probably ain't gonna re retreat it, even at plus four. Um, and I managed to roll a six. So a two plus four is a six, so I held my ground. Stuff goes back on the turn track. Then he decided to go after this guy. Um, when we go into combat commitment, I was definitely going to throw in my tanks marker. Uh, and then I did the math in my head. And I figured the worst he could do is get a retreat on me. Because he is uh, plus two for German, plus two for armor. Plus one for an airplane, and then minus one for the river, minus one for the swamp, minus one for the weather. Right? Am I have that right? He's three, four, five. No, he was six. He was plus six. He's three for the ar um, armored unit is plus three, then plus two for a buddy is five, and then six for the airplane. So he ends up being minus three here, river, swamp weather. So he's only plus three to my plus three. Even on a full 6-1 split, it's a nine to a four, which is a retreat. So worst he can do is flip me and I'd have the points to flip him back. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, and I showed him how I got to my three. And then he rolled a five total. I rolled a four total, so nothing happened. So much ado about nothing again. And... Moved his tanks. Yeah, we moved our tanks to the turn track. Um, and then he was stopping at 16. And again, we get to see the Yugoslavs move over into Russia. And then he was done. Uh, I went into the west, and now I did some shenanigans in the west, I think. Uh... I moved this guy. I started to move him to Port Say, thinking I could just go running through, but I forgot that I had to spend three to get into the Red Sea. Uh, actually, four. To, it cost me four movement points to get to 31, I think it is, or seven or something like that. And I was like, well, that's, I'm not going to get anywhere with that. I really don't need to go that way. What I need to do is go this way. So I went um, three, six, because the... Uh, West African is three. Six to the South Atlantic here. And then six to the North Atlantic. And then seven, or ten into... So I was nine in the North Atlantic, ten in sea zone seven. He could intercept me. He chose not to, so I just landed there. And uh, the airplane now has a sortie as well. Uh, then... I started to, I moved the home fleet over by this convoy, because hey, it makes sense. Now, I started to move the British and realized I had to move the French first. So I started that, and I said, no, no, back up, back things up. Um, went up here, and I moved the Frenchman that's in Antwerp, moves down to uh, the fort, and gets goes back into the fort. Then, Force H... And company, along with the BEF, come up and land in Antwerp. This convoy runs down, ends its turn in Casablanca, so it's three sorties. And then he goes one, two, one into 16, goes into Gibraltar, drops the guy off into the fort. And then goes two, three, and ends up. Because it was 1 into 16, in, then into the port, 2 into 16, 3 into 7. And I end my turn in uh, Plymouth. Again, he's like, uh, it's not worth it for me to waste the guy. And now I think... Oh, then I flew this airplane up to Algiers. And... Oh, I was just putting the guy under the fort. 
Now I said it's time to run away. So I left the Belgian hex, moved the guy up to Dijon, put the Belgians out there to die. And what I'm trying to do here is I now have a defense line with a the fort, Sedan, Brussels, Antwerp, which is held by the British. I have support guys behind as far as uh, you know a reserve. I have a reserve behind that line, a couple of mobile units. Um, the idea here is to, you know, weather the storm, so to speak. I'm hoping for poor weather, but when I looked at it, I felt myself too exposed. A um, couple of lucky die rolls, and he would break through all the way to Sedan, cutting off three of my mobile armies, uh, and then there'd be nothing between him and Paris and, the, and all sorts of cities um, in April, and I just didn't want to have to deal with that. So I decided that I'm going to go do my defenses here. Probably going to bring, you know, airplanes over and stuff for the British since I have them up here now. So that's what I'm working on. Um, I started to supply here and I said, what am I doing? There's no Italians. I don't need to supply anybody. These guys can all stay in low supply, and I did supply the Western Desert Force, because I want them to be able to move and be effective if necessary. Uh, I think that's my ops. Yeah, let me go into the Soviets. They did absolutely nothing. So we go to Axis Replacements, um, and this is... Wait. Watch his national tracks. He's at 16, so he goes ahead and moves it down to, to 0. And he gets those two, those two. And then he spent another six and said, that's it. I'm not going to do diplomacy this turn. Get my airplanes down. Um, he forgot to do his six-point fighter here. He does it here in a minute. Um, I think it's after I start mine. Yeah, I think I'm starting to do the French here. And then he, he was like, oh, yeah, okay, I forgot to do those two. Uh, so I brought down my French here. Uh, twenty-seven eleven. Where's Oh, yeah, I fixed the British Air Force so it could help defend the BEF. That's where it was. And then uh, the French did their airplanes. Go into the Soviets. Uh, they uh, got this thing in the way. Um, they're going to bring down their airplanes all over the place. We go into the upgrade phase. There is none. Mobilization. Don't think anybody had anything to mobilize. Oh, the Soviets um, had another airplane that they went ahead and built. And then we're to the diplomacy phase. Uh, the Germans, if you look on the national tracks, the Germans and the British don't have any points. So they got to skip. We got to the Soviets, and the Soviets are looking and going, Oh, I know there's a political failure. Political failure doesn't really hurt him. They get a pro marker in Greece. They get a pro marker in um, Finland. Either one doesn't really bother the Russians at all. And there is one political success in four no events. And I thought, well, if I try to pull out the political success, then there's really no chance for the Germans to get anybody else in the war without conquering France. So I went ahead and spent the money and took the chance and got lucky. Uh, you know, it's a one in five, let's see, four, five, six, one in five, I think. Either way, um, 
I got the political success, and I went ahead and put it in Finland, uh, because Germany can't really attack Finland if it decides to go pro-Russian. Um, I, if I did it in Greece and then actually ended up being forced to activate them, like through some other political success or political failure, um, you know, I just, I don't want to deal with it, so. And there's no victory check. We go to the end of turn phase. This is the sort of semi-important part for the uh, for the West. Yeah, we get back our tanks and a, a ground support for the Russians. But most importantly, the Americans are in. So they now have a tanks marker that's useless. And those things go into North America. Now I have extra supply capability with the with the American convoy and fleet there. So supply is not going to become such a dance of death as it has been recently. I can drop those guys into France and help supply British units, and I can bring British air over to actually fight German air and all that good stuff. So that was my big thing. Uh, this was me showing him how he could... He, was, he thought I should have stayed, and I said, yeah, but if the Germans get across here, and they blow up this, and they blow up this, they can basically cut off two of my mobile armies and, you know, just keep going. Just the heck with these guys. Just keep flying into France and conquering all sorts of stuff. And I didn't want to take that chance. I'd rather be on my best defensive line with a reserve. So that's what I did. Am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. That's the end of our game. Uh, end of our turn there. So, there you have it. January and February of 1942. Possibility of fair weather in March. Uh, so, I played chicken. I'm trying to hold out till, you know, if I can hold out through the summer with the French, uh, I think I can hold out through the war with the French. Um, because I'll start getting U.S. units, and I hopefully will be able to get... If I can hold out till the Russians get in, then I'll have, like, the entire British Army in France. So, there's that. I'm Dren608. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Helps keep YouTube uh, algorithms happy and keeps my videos up and relevant. Uh, until I see you next time, stay safe. Bye-bye.